Hello viewers of all bodily compositions, I'm Prince Vade, and this is going to be a Poke Editor tutorial so you can learn how to use the editor. This is the first of many, and I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. Um, I plan to make a lot of these to cover all of the functions of Poke Editor, these and some cool functions that you don't know about yet. That's why I'm making these tutorials. Um, a lot of people have trouble using the editor, that's why I'm making these so you can learn how. Um, in this specific tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the add entity command. Um, Poke Editor is very buggy, especially with this command, because it's still in development, and the development is kind of slow, uh, because the uh, creator has other priorities that he needs to fill as well. So, um, it's, uh, some of the entities may add, some of them may not add, but either way I'm going to teach you about all of them. Okay, the, um, the action and additional value, you don't have to worry about, I will co definitely cover those in a later video. The collision, it comes in two values, true or false, it's... Pretty self-explanatory. All right, your entity types. They are for adding entities. You really need to remember this because it determines what shape the entity has. Um, all of them have a model ID, and I'm not going to cover that in depth in this video. I'll probably make another video to cover it deeply. But right now, you just need to worry about the entity type. Floors are zeros. Wall blocks. Wall, a wall block is basically just a block without a bottom. Um, an all sides object is a cube with sh like permanent sides. <laughs> um, a slide block is a steep slant. Um, I'm sure you've seen those on some of the roofs of the Pokemon Center if you play Pokemon 3D. A wall bill are what the trees use. They are stuff that follows you. A sign block is blocks for signs. Um, a warp block is a block that which you step into when with the collision on it warps you. A step block is like when you hop off the steps, the ridges. Um, cut trees, water, grass, loamy soil, berry plant, all kinds of really cool stuff. Okay, so model ID, position. Your positioning um, is really tricky to get at first until you really learn it. It's basically the X, Y, and Z values, or yeah, of um, the block that you're putting in. At the top right, you or at the top left, you always want um, the position to be 0, 0. So when you're looking at an aerial view in Poke Editor, it's got to be 0, 0, 0. It's otherwise you mess the whole map up. The rotations go with that. The positioning goes off of that. Sizes go off of that. Lots of really fun, cool stuff. Um, so basically, if you want to enter a wall block with this crappy texture, um, let's say I wanted it at four, one, four. That's gonna be around right here on my screen. So let's see if it'll actually add without freezing and bugging it up. See right there. Okay. Okay. So back to the, see how you start at 000? Zero, zero, zero? That's good. Alright, back to the add entity command. Alright, um, rotation values have been changed since Poke Editor was last updated. Um, the, you can rotate in Poke Editor on a 0, 1, 2, and 3 basis, and that just means they're facing one direction. As of a recent update, you can rotate them in all three directions as much as you want. Um, that's X, Y, and Z directions. That's 3D modeling rotation. Um, I'll explain that definitely in a later video. Very important. All right, your scale is basically how much space that object takes up. Let me see if I can edit an entity and then change the scale of it later. Okay, so let's say I wanted that entity. The entity properties is the exact same as add entity, except for you can change stuff. Let's say I wanted the scale to be 2 and the Y. It becomes 2 in the y. Of course, then you have to adjust the y positioning value. Let's try 0.25. That's not enough. Let's try 0.5 because it's so much. There you go. And then it just, it just stretches. Okay. Let's see what else. Remember, entity properties or edit entity, whatever you prefer, is just the same as add entity. So everything that I explain in here can be explained in add entity just as well. Um, size, um, you all should know entity fields and entity separation if you're using Poke Editor. Um, entity field is basically a bunch of entities collaborating and an entity is a single block file tile. Um, your size determines how many go in one direction. Let's say I change the size to 5-5. Five, five. That's going to become a field entity that is 5 to the right and 5 down. See what I mean? This um, this grassy block that you start out on in Poke Editor is a 10 by 10 floor entity field. Really cool stuff, right? Yep. Okay, back to the edit slash add entity. Your texture index. 
I have to cover this later. It is way too in-depth to do. Basically, you only need it if you're advanced mapping. Um, mapping insides, interiors, all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, so I will definitely make a later video with that. Probably combine it with XYZ rotation. Your texture path is basically the X and B file at which the textures are pulled from. So wood tower is the texture. Let's say I wanted to change this to roots. Let's say I have a root texture file open and I wanted to change it to that. And boom, boom. Recognize that tile? That's for the Pokemon Center. Um, if anything ever disappears, you can just hit escape twice. Your textures. This is tricky. Um, I'll probably briefly explain this here. This right here, which my mouse is right under, is the X value at which the texture is being pulled from. It's the same as positioning, but inside the texture file. Um, instead of this being Y, this is actually the Z, since texture files are 2D. And the this is the dimensions of the, the tile that you're pulling. Let's say I can definitely show you this. Let's change it from 32 to 32. See how it becomes four tiles instead of one, which is 16, 16. If I change one of these values, it becomes two. See? So on and so forth. That should still be 16. You're visible. Um, this probably won't work, and it'll freeze up, but that'll be the end of the video anyway. Um, but it basically means whether you can see it or not. See how they're invisible now? Well, I mean, the p pink lines won't show up in actual Pokemon 3D. Alright, so, that'll be it for this video. Um, when Poke Editor stops quitting on me. <laughs> Not funny, Poke Editor. Okay, so to briefly cover everything, um, collision, if you run into it or not, entity types is basically the shape of the entity, model ID ties into entity types, position is basically the position on the map that at which that block is paced, placed at, rotation, one, 0, 1, 2, and 3, scale is basically how much space the object takes up, how many 16 pixels it takes up, size is how many of those single entities make up the entity field, 1, 1 is just a regular entity, texture index, we'll explain later, Texture path is the texture file at which the uh, textures are pulled from. Textures is the positioning in the texture file which the texture pull from and the size of the tile. Visible is whether you can see it or not. That was really quick, but Pokeator takes a long time to explain, so I wanted to make sure it was quick. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot. What you need to do is you need to subscribe to this channel. Um, definitely. And you need to like, you need to favorite, whatever you need to do, you need to memorize this tutorial. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it taught you something about the add entity and the edit entity, which are the same thing. <laughs> um, fields. Uh, I hope you learned how to use Poke Editor. hope you get into mapping. Alright, guys. Um, I hope you are looking forward to my next video. Um, subscribe, like, do all that cool YouTube jazz. Um, I'm fading out, everyone. See you later.